South Korean activists said they would refrain from flying anti-North Korean leaflets over the border at the start of the year. But earlier this week, another group did it again. Well, this is just one of many groups in and outside of Korea dedicated to reminding the world that something more must be done about the dire situation in the North. And regardless of their noble goals, some fear their actions could do more harm than good. And joining us in the studio today is Thor Halverson, president of the Human Rights Foundation. Welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Well, first up, Thor, the first very general question we would have for you is, I guess this will be at the tip of everyone's minds. How effective are these anti-North Korean propaganda leaflets? Uh, or is it just the act itself it's supposed to be meaningful to get the attention from outside of North Korea? And it's South a good Korea? question. And if you talk to uh, North Korean defectors that received the leaflets, and they tell you, I received the leaflets, and it was the first time uh, that I could imagine that there was a different world or that, this, or that the South Koreans would not kill me if I defected, a lie that is spread in North Korea regularly. Mm -hmm. If you talk to those people, um, the leaflets are very effective. Uh, leaflets are only one of uh, many different ways of getting information into North Korea and having people um, enjoy the opportunity of uh, peering outside the hermit kingdom, uh, finding out other things that they had no idea about. In some cases, cartoons. In some cases, it's fiction. In some cases, it's uh, photographs. Uh, everyone has a different story of what moved them to change, to, to seek a different life, uh, or to oppose the government. Right. Well, back in the 80s or the 70s, we had the other way around working uh, in terms of leaflets being flown. North Koreans were flying leaflets to South Korea. How would you compare the effects of this and that? Well, they actually, in, historically speaking, they were both doing it. Both governments are doing it. Mm. The southern government was doing it. To the, southern, the dictatorship in the south was flying them north, and the dictatorship in the north was flying them south. Now, this was certainly not something that the um, various Korean groups mm. invented. Uh, this has been used in Europe, in Eastern Europe. It was a way of getting information across the Iron Curtain into East Germany, for instance, into uh, countries that are living under Soviet dictatorships. Um, so are they effective? Yes, but the key is they have to contain the truth. And the truth is a, is a very powerful weapon. Um, it is one that engages in nonviolence and one that is clearly, um, after seeing how the North Korean government responds to this, clearly a weapon that they're afraid of. Okay. Well, do you think the South Korean government has the power to stop you or other activists from flying these leaflets across the border? Because what we've seen before is that the government seems to be concerned about these leaflets, perhaps maybe for right, maybe it could raise tensions on the Korean Peninsula, but at the same time, they're not really, they don't seem determined to actively intervene in this issue. Well, to respond to your question, do they have the power to stop us? Well, of course, they're a government. They have guns. Mm -hmm. Uh, they can most certainly, they have the power to do it. Do they have the authority to do so is, is another matter. The Constitution of the Republic of Korea allows freedom of expression. And certainly what these activists are doing, uh, whether it's by sending USBs or DVDs or, or, or leaflets and educational material, um, is do they have the authority to stop that? I do think that there's a case to be made quite effectively mm -hmm. that if the North Korean government retaliates because a public launch is done and a balloon is sent up publicly on 4 p.m. on a Tuesday and it's announced and the North Korean government retaliates with, with uh, gunfire, that can affect people in those local areas. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, I think that these balloon launches should be done in private. They should be done in a clandestine manner. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I, I don't think that there sh should ever be illegal to send information and share no different than it would be for me to hand out leaflets outside this television mm -hmm. station. It's really well publicized before and during and after your, 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 your group or any other group tries to uh, conduct these activities. So people are wondering, is it necessary for you to attract so much media attention or is it your intention or does it serve a purpose or could you actually work without all that media hype? Well, the two balloon drops that occurred earlier in the month had nothing to do with the Human Rights Foundation. So that's certainly not, uh, that, certainly that criticism can be aimed at them. The balloon drop that we did um, was not announced in advance. So we announced it the day after, and we had a press conference the day after. Uh, and we certainly think that that matters. Why it matters so much is because the North has sent assassins to kill the people doing it. Um, that should give you a sense of why it matters so much to them and how effective this is. The North Korean people are starving for this information. They want this information. They ask for this information. And many of them are willing to risk their lives in order to get it. 
Okay. Well, you know, let's briefly talk about the movie, The Interview. I guess North Korea is not very happy about that movie. But you guys were originally going to send or fly these movies, DVDs, mm -hmm. to North Korea, but didn't. Why? Why oh, didn't we you certainly guys do? are going to. Okay. Oh, we most certainly are going to. Will it be effective? Now, is it going to be effective? In speaking yesterday with uh, a person who was in charge of the, um, the equivalent of the psychological operations unit um, at the very high levels of the military of North Korea, he described the film's effect as that of um, having a nuclear bomb effect in the mind of a North Korean about its government. Now, you have to consider the, the absurdity, the fact that we're talking about how a single movie, a comedy, that in some cases isn't funny and in some cases not that funny, a movie is upsetting a government so much that they have a three-star general in charge of a task force to stop it from getting into the country. That tells you a lot about the North Korean government. And it tells you, I mean, if, if they're that afraid of comedy, Oh my goodness, uh, what would they do to drama and fiction? Mm. Well, I am okay. deeply concerned about the level of insecurity the country has. So it, it could, we could be, uh, I guess, shaking up the hornet's nest a little bit. <laughs> I, I do hope we could approach it somewhere halfway between you know, the direct and aggressive approach and a little bit more gentler tact. That's yes. just my personal And the gentler opinion. tact involves what? Sending them more money? <laughs> sending them a cent, sending them hookers, money, and whiskey? Something in between what you are doing and what the government is doing. What is, is in doing. between, though? Well, the in between, the, there, there are 20 yeah. something million people living in the most totalitarian, oppressive nation in the world, and people in South Korea seem to want to avoid even discussing mm -hmm. it. It makes them uncomfortable. They have relatives up there. Let's not talk about it. Let's not even go there. We need reform and moderation and dialogue. Anyone who talks like that should be willing to spend a year in North Korea living in the same conditions that mm -hmm. the North Koreans live. Speaking with great empathy, thank you so much <laughs> for you. joining us today. Thank and you for uh, having me. Correcting a certain, uh, I guess, flawed perception of your activities today, uh, uh, Thor Halverson. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope to have you back here someday again. Have me back and visit hackthemback.com if you want to learn more. Yeah. Hackthemback.com. Thank All you right. so much for your time. Thank you.